All right, today we're going to learn about the dial caliper, which is much more precise of a measurement device than the ruler that we've been using to do like the metric activity or the US customary activity. So this will be a PowerPoint then on the description and use of the dial caliper. So like I mentioned before, it's going to be much more precise than the tools we've been using. It's the most versatile and common of the precision measuring tools used by engineers and by manufacturers. There are four types of measurements that you can take using the same tool. And no matter which of these that you're doing, it is the same way of reading the instrument. Right? So no matter which type of measure we're taking, we're gonna read the instrument the same way. So we're talking about outside diameter, inside diameter, step distance, or hole depth. And again, no matter which way, we're gonna read the instrument the same way. There are some limitations to, or the upper limit to this dial caliper being six inches. So anything that's gonna be over six inches, we're probably not gonna be able to measure with this tool. We'd have to use some other device. But let's talk about, assuming that it's smaller than six inches, the different ways that we could record or capture the measurements. The first one is gonna be the outside length. So using these measuring faces down here, the two prongs facing down, I can record the outside length or diameter for an object. So as an example, if this is the block and I'm wanting the depth of that block, I place my measuring faces on either side and then read the measurement on the caliper. I can also do inside length or inside diameter using the two measuring faces that are on the top or the prongs on the top of the dial caliper. If I have a hole or a slot and I want to get the diameter of that, I can do the inside faces touching where this diameter is and then again reading the measurement off the dial caliper. The next one is a stepped length. It would be the difference between this first and this second. These are kind of offset like this portion of the caliper is in front of the other one. And if you flip it around, you can kind of see that. Like this is in front of the other one. And the step distance is the distance between this surface and here. Again, recorded the same way. So it's pretty rare. Most people would use the depth one to get this measurement. And the last one is the depth. So at the very edge, the caliper is a small piece that will come out to record the depth of an object. I would lay this portion of the caliper flush with this face and then this to record the actual depth. And like I've said, no matter which way we're doing the measurements, they're going to be read the same way on the caliper. Let's talk about terminology so that when we talk, get into the explanation how to use this, we're all on the same plate. Uh, the blade is going to be the portion of the dial caliper that does not move. This is a stable, immo immovable part of the caliper. It's also where we have some of the larger increment measurements on it. And then the slide is going to be the portion that does move along the blade. As the slide moves, you're going to notice that the pointer will revolve as well. The blade is divided up into 10 increments, meaning from the zero to where the one inch is, I've divided up into 10. So each of those is going to represent one tenth of an inch. And then on the part that slides, I have the dial, which is going to look like the face of a watch. And I have the pointer, which is going to point to the much more smaller increments or smaller measurements. And as I'm moving the slide back and forth, you're going to notice that the pointer is going to move. The reference edge, which is right here, is going to keep track of my larger measurements. So like whole inches and then a tenth of an inch. The smaller measurements, so the hundreds and thousands of an inch, are going to be recorded using the face of the dot. Okay. So this is my reference edge. I'll use that when we do an example in just a minute. The rack or the little geared teeth on, that are on the blade, that's what causes the pointer to revolve. An accurate uh, dial caliper reading requires several steps, and the first step is zeroing it out. When I'm using any type of measurement device, whether it be a scale or a caliper, I need to make sure that it's zeroed out or calibrated before I use it. With the caliper completely closed, I want to make sure that my pointer is directly on the zero. So in my example here, it is not. And to correct that, I'm going to loosen the dial lock. It's going to be under the face of the dial. And then I can actually turn the face until it is lined up with zero. Once I do that, I want to lock this back down. I like to kind of open and close the dial caliper a few times so that when I do that, I want to check does it always go back to zero. If so, then I can go ahead and start taking the measurements. 
Each time the pointer completes one rotation within the dial, the reference edge on the slider moves the distance of one blade scale increment, which is 0.1 inches. What that means is every time I rotate and make one complete rotation on the dial, it's the same thing as my reference edge moving, let's say, from the six to the seven, or six tenths of an inch to seven tenths of an inch. So this dial is dividing up this space into 100 little points. Every time this rotates one, it's the same as moving this distance. So this is, again, a very highly precise measuring device where you get really, really small increments. One revolution of the pointer within the dial represents one-tenth of an inch. The dial is divided 100 times, therefore each graduation equals one-thousandth of an inch. So each of the lines here, thousandths of an inch, the small dots in between lines are five ten-thousandths of an inch, even smaller than that. Okay, so let's do an example then, and I'm going to be using the outside diameter type of measurement on this caliper to record the diameter then of this pipe. So I have a pipe, I'm looking at the cross section of the pipe, I want to know what the outside diameter is. This pipe is probably made of metal, so when I clamp it down, it's just going to touch, not going to affect the size. But keep in mind that if this material were plastic or uh, foam, or rubber that if I really clamp down tight, it's going to push in on that and it's going to affect the measurement. We don't want to do that. So I just want my measuring surfaces to touch this. Okay. Once I do that, I want to identify how many inches are being shown on the blade scale. So the inches are the larger number. I have one whole inch. And I don't see the next, I don't see the two. So I know that I have one inch, whole inch. Then I want to record the number of tenths that I have, right? So I have one, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. This is my reference edge. I see the number five, but I'm not to number five yet. The line is always gonna come after. The line we're looking for for the reference edge is after the number. So even though I see the five, I'm not to five yet. Right, so I have 0 0.4, so one for whole inches, 0 0.4 off of my reference edge. Now I'm gonna go to the dial to record the remainder. The remainder is the distance from the line from the four into where my reference edge is. That's the distance that I'm interested in, and that's what I will get from the dial. So reading the dial, I get 0 0.03, looks like I'm at seven, 0 0.037. And if I zoom in, I see that the pointer is just past that line. So I can estimate that last digit. So let's say it's another uh, 10 thousandths of an inch. If I were to add these up, I would get my total measurement of 1.4371. The first four digits I'm certain of based on the instrument I'm using. The last digit is my estimate. Let's do another example. How wide is this block? Again, whole inches first. I have one whole inch. And I'm going to read my scale increments, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. I do see the line, so I'm beyond the 0.4. And so I'm at 1.4. Now I'm going to go here. This is going to trip people up. Because I'm not to this 10 on my dial, the next digit here should be a 0. Okay. Oh. Until I get to the 10, it's going to be 0. So this is going to be 0, 2. And then again, if I blow it up, and I'm looking at it. It looks like it's just past maybe another 2 10 thousandths of an inch beyond that point. If I add it up, I get 1.4022. Let's look at some examples from the actual activity that we're starting today, which is 3.3. Let's work this up a little bit. So we're going to be using the auto blocks car as the objects that are going to be recording the measurements. And there'll be a chance to use you know, outside measure, inside, step measurements, depth measurements. On the activity itself, I have a portion of the car. So in this case, I have for the T9 truck, the, the body of the truck the passenger base for the truck. And so I want to record you know, the depth of the object, the height, the width, and then the depth of this slot. So I'm going to use the dial caliper to do that. So let's look at an example of working through that using the caliper. All right, so I'll put this here. This is the caliper I'm going to use. Before we doing any measuring, we talked about we want to make sure we calibrate it first. It needs to be on zero when the caliper is completely closed. So as I close it, and look at it, it looks like I'm right on zero, right? So it's good, open, close, I'm right on zero. If it were not, I would loosen the little dial lock down here, and then this face can then turn, right? So I can turn this face to make sure that
that it is completely on zero. When it is, I'll lock it back down. And then like I said, I like to check, open and close it a couple times. Is it on zero? Yeah. All right, from here then, I'm gonna do the depth of this piece. So I'm gonna be using these two measuring faces to get the depth of this piece here. Once I get that, there's actually a lock you can use to lock this down, I'll lock that down on the top. And I'll turn this up so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so I'm measuring that distance. I'm gonna start with whole inches. I see the number three, so three whole inches. I see the point one. I see the number two, but I don't see that line yet. That's it's 3.1, and then I'm gonna read the dial to get the remainder. So I'm gonna say that it's 3.1670. And my last digit zero is my estimate. I'm saying it's exactly on that little mark. So that's my estimate. So 3.1670. Let's do one more example using a different portion of the caliper. So I'm going to do the, the little wheel for the truck. And I'm interested in the diameter of the hole that's on the inside. So to do that, I'm going to use the prongs that are on the top to get the inside diameter. Again, because this is plastic, if I put enough force on the caliper, it would probably affect the size. So I want it to, so that this, the surfaces are just touching, but nothing more than that, okay? So with that in place now, I'm gonna start here. I don't even have whole inches. So it's gonna be 0 0.3. I can actually see the little line. It might be hard to see from where you are, but the little line is there. It's on 0.3. And I'm gonna go here to get the rest. So I'm gonna say it's 0 0.303, and then there's a remainder, maybe another two, Ten thousandths of an inch after that. Zero point three oh three two would be that size. So that would be kind of the process we're going to go through on this activity. I have you work through the body of the car, the fillets on the car. The fillets would be the rounded edges, uh, getting the diameter for all the different parts of the wheel, and some of the dimensions from the connection piece. This is what holds the different parts of the car together. We can skip question number five. We're not going to have you do the optional part number five. And there are two conclusion questions at the end of this activity. I would encourage you to work in pairs. If you are working in pairs, though, you need to make sure that both of you are comfortable with using the tool to record measurements. So you can have one wheel and one body and take turns taking measurements. But make sure that as a pair, you're both getting a turn to do that because you will need to use this instrument again on other activities that we do this year. You can record your answers directly on the Word document. <clears throat> you may have to use a text box to do that, <clears throat> but this can all go directly in the Word document. And then when you finish, I'll have you upload that Word document to the LMS. It'll be two days to work on this before we move on to the next activity.